I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Cipher. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about outdated UX patterns, how to learn Angular JS, lazily loading ads, and more. Let's check it out. <laughs> First up, we have a project called Launch Rocket. Launch Rocket is this really nice preference pane for Mac OS X that enables you to easily start and stop and load services that you've installed with Homebrew. Now, if we take a look at the GitHub project here, you can see a nice screenshot of Launch Rocket. It'll give you a listing of all the different services that you have installed. You can start or stop them as well as remove them. And there's even a really nice preference here to run it as root if you have to. Um, now it shows you, like I said, if everything is running and it's actually super easy to install. Now this does require a project called Homebrew Cask. Homebrew Cask is a project that's actually really interesting and allows you to install different types of applications, more GUI-based applications with Homebrew. Now, there's tons of formula in there for things like Google Chrome, Adobe Creative Suite, just a ton of stuff that you may not have installed already. Anyway, there's a link to that in the show notes that goes along with Launch Rocket, so make sure you check it out. Really nice project and something that you may want to have installed. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is jQuery Notebook. If you need to embed a WYSIWYG text editor into your website or web application, this is perfect for that. Now, WYSIWYG, of course, stands for what you see is what you get. Kind of like us. Exactly. And you can go ahead and click on the demo here on the GitHub page to see how that works. So here's a jQuery Notebook demo page, and I can go ahead and just type some text here and we can highlight things and then bold them, make them italicized, underline them, change them to different level headings. We can even do ordered lists or unordered lists. Pretty nice rich text editor here and it's also very simple to use. Like I said, it's a jQuery plugin. Not a whole lot to say about it. One more thing I do want to add is that you can do all of those same things with command key. So they have some nice little shortcuts here along with a few other additional options if you want to use them. Very cool stuff. Definitely check that one out. Nick, when you first said that project's name, I thought it was a jQuery plugin that would automatically insert different clips from the movie, The Notebook, into your web page. Sorry to disappoint. It was like, I don't, I don't want to cry every time I go to this website. Next up, we have a project called Tether. Tether is a great project that, quote, marries DOM elements for life. Like now, you and me. Yeah. We, if we were DOM elements and we used this plugin, um, it would probably still uh, make me cry. So anyway, Tether is, uh, it, it's really nice. So it, basically any element, you can attach it or tether it to another element. Now, you'll see on the side of the screen here, you can actually interact with this demo. As we're scrolling through, where it says action one, two, and three stays tethered to this element here on the left. Now, I can even scroll through inside of this demo, and you see that, once again, those actions stay tethered. Now, if we take a look at the documentation here, we can see that there are just a ton of different options that you can do. You can tell it which part of the different elements you want to have it attached to. And then I am, I'm actually scrolling here, and you can see that these stay tethered as well. We are targeting the yellow box with the green box and attached to top right. Now, you can attach it in a bunch of different positions, and it is super easy to use. Now, we will have a link to Tether inside of the show notes, which you can check out at youtube.com slash go treehouse, or search for us on iTunes at The Treehouse Show. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is Outdated UX Patterns and Alternatives. This is a really cool blog post that highlights some outdated UX patterns and then identifies a few alternatives, just as the title implies. Uh, the first one is carousels. So you've seen this before. There's a few dots at the bottom or maybe numbers, and there's two arrows on the left and right sides. And you kind of can click through each item in the carousel and see what's next or previous. 
This is kind of annoying because you can't really see everything at once. You may not necessarily be interested in the item that's currently being presented on the carousel. So one thing they suggest to do instead is to prioritize the content. So for example, if you have a marketing page, you might want to include all of that on one page so that it's visible all at once and users can scroll through the content at their leisure. Carousel? More like I don't carousel, right? Ooh. Next one is large background images. This is something that you see quite a lot around the internet, and they say that it doesn't really add a whole lot for any user whose screen is smaller than 1024 pixels across. So a couple of alternatives they offer are context-aware image sizing. That's pretty smart. And another thing we've talked about on the show previously is Zurb Interchange. So that's a way to switch out your images intelligently based on the resolution and context. Another counter-argument is listed here. Actually, a blog post on the Treehouse blog called Creating Responsive Websites with Photo Backgrounds. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. There's a couple more listed out in this article. We're not going to go all through all of them here, but definitely check that one out. Very nice stuff. Very cool. Uh, next up, we have a blog post called How to Learn Angular JS. Now, this is a super in-depth post, which we're not going to cover everything, but this goes through everything you need to know about learning Angular JS. So it talks through the main parts, directives, controllers, scopes, services, and dependency injection. Now, one of the nice things about this tutorial, as opposed to some others, is you can actually see and interact with and change everything right in line on the post, and then just click Run with JavaScript, and it will work right there on the page. Now, this is a very, very thorough um, introduction to AngularJS. Really, yeah, they really cover all the angles here. Oh, I get it, because it's called Angular. That's right. Huh, you're right. You're getting smarter. Yeah, sorry. I, I didn't get it at first. I thought that was going to make me a little bit obtuse. So um, anyway, yeah, like I said, just a ton, ton of depth in this article. Uh, we really can't cover everything on here, but go ahead and read it if you've been learning, if you've been wanting to learn AngularJS. I liked your joke there, Jason. That was a cute one. You're right. Wow. Well, moving on, uh, next up is this wonderful article from Google Ventures called Why You Should Move That Button Three Pixels to the Left. It's basically talking about pixel perfection and why it's important in some instances where maybe it's not so important. So the first thing is it's not designed for design's sake. They're basically saying you need to explain to the rest of the team why designers should spend time on fit and finish and that users are going to understand the difference between functional aspects of your app and just delightful aspects of your app. It's very important. One thing that that does do is build trust. So it increases the trust that users have in your app, in your brand in general. If you pay attention to the details, they know that they can trust you to handle other much more important aspects, uh, particularly with the payment examples that they offer here, such as Mint, Square, and Simple. Not necessarily payment, but uh, financial. So that's, pretty, that's a pretty good point there. Uh, they have a couple of others here. One that I really like is to avoid customization icebergs. They're basically saying, you know, a native control uh, will work much better if that's really all that you have time for, rather than creating a custom control where you have to worry about the active states, the hover states, when it's pushed down, when it's disabled, all kinds of stuff like that. And if you're not really going to have time to address each one of those specific states, it's much better to just go with a native control that's going to work all the time. So. Very cool article, really insightful stuff. Of course, this is from Google Ventures, so definitely uh, something to take a look at. They have a lot of experience with this. Yeah, you know, we, we've even uh, talked about some frameworks on here that don't address certain you know, elements with custom UIs because it can be so difficult to go through and implement. Very true. Next up, we have a project called Lazy Ads. Now, this is a very, very interesting project that lets you deliver ads asynchronously without modifying the ad code. Now, why in the world would you want to do that? Well, something that we talk about a lot here on the Treehouse Show is responsive design. Now, depending on the site that you have, your ad may not make sense for all different browsers and all different resolutions, and it might 
still have to be shown with different media queries or not. So the problem with some ads is that, let's say you have an ad on a smaller browser that you're trying to hide with a media query, well, the ad is still going to load and the code's still going to load, and then it's going to be hidden later. Now, this project, Lazy Ads, will go through, and without any code on your part, it won't even go fetch the ad, which means that your users are going to have a much quicker experience. Now, um, the way that they do it is pretty easy. You just include the lazy ad loader code and, and then close the ad script inside of a div with the data attribute for lazy ad. Now, it goes even further than that. If you want to, you can even specify the width and the height or media queries. Now, this works on IE7 and up, and this is a great solution for basically responsive advertisements. Very nice. Well, next up is CSS Shake, which is just some CSS classes to move your DOM, as it says on the page here. If I scroll down, here are the basic collection of classes that they offer. They have a basic shake, slow shake, little shake, hard shake, fix horizontal, fix vertical, and so on. You can make stuff shake really crazily. So this might be useful if you're trying to follow a couple of popular design patterns where maybe you want to draw attention to a particular element or you want to show that elements are in a different state. For example, when you uh, hold down on your icons on the iPhone, all of the icons will start to shake and it kind of represents that, hey, these are now in an editable state where you can drag them around, delete them, and so on. So it's kind of an interesting idea there that you might want to carry over to the web. Um, there's a couple of variations that you can add here. So let's select a shake. There we go. Hard shake, and you can kind of combine them. That's kind of interesting. And then here's how to use it. It's really easy. You just include the CSS shake, and then you can go ahead and apply these classes. So very cool stuff. They also offer SAS mix-ins if you want to go that route. Uh, definitely be sure to check that out if you want to shake things up. Oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. The CSS shake sounds kind of like a dance, doesn't it? It does a little bit. Do the CSS shake, huh? Do the JavaScript jig. You're going places, Jason. Give each other an HTML high five after. Bam. All right. You got web served. I am at NickerB on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash GoTreeHouse or search for us in iTunes and please rate us by searching for The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, maybe even much better videos, <laughs> be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next week.